Spring from Chickenwood Studio. I'm Lori and uh, it's been many, many months since we've been together. And uh, I'm happy to take some time today to pop into your world and say I'm alive and well and thankful that it's turning springtime, even though today it's a cloudy, rainy day out there, but it's warmer and milder than it's been in quite some time. So it's been kind of late in coming Although it is the Northeast USA, spring can be very tentative and elusive. <laughs> so at least it's not snowing like in Illinois. Um, welcome to my podcast. I live in upstate New York. Um, my podcast is about knitting and spinning and handcrafting. And I also talk about things that other things that I do like soap making and sometimes a little gardening jack of all trades kind of thing. So welcome. And if you're a new viewer, welcome today for the first time. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for your messages and kind notes and encouraging thoughts. Uh, when I <clears throat> had been away for so long, sometimes I even wondered whether to start up again. And, uh, but I miss all of you too. So um, I have set aside this morning to do a podcast. I have a lot of catching up to do. I have a few FOs and a lot of whips and some, you know, chit chat about what's going on and what's up this coming year. I'm drinking Tulsi tea today. And this is the most recent mug I've purchased. I probably have talked about my obsession with mugs. I just sent a, a little box off to Salvation Army. <laughs> to make room for the ones. Uh, so yeah, the last one I posted on Instagram was a little winter scene from a trip to Massachusetts with my daughter. Same trip, this one came home as well. Mm. Tulsi tea or holy basil tea is just so good. I hope that if you're a tea drinker, you can, you're, if, if you haven't had it, that you can locate some. I might have to stop the tape. <laughs> Drink it while it's warm. Nah. Uh, the safe place to put it is the next question. Here we go. Ah, so <clears throat> the last time we talked, I was last August, and that was episode 23. So this is episode 24. I have some notes. I have a list of things to share with you, but I'll probably meander here and there when different thoughts come up. The fall was, oh, and I'll try to stop rocking in this chair. The fall was very busy. We had company from Norway and England for Rhinebeck and gathered together with local knitters as well for a little tea party before we all went down for the weekend. And then it was just the holidays and kind of a blur in the winter. And I had an amazing surprise at Christmas when my son Greg showed up in my house on Christmas Eve from China and totally floored me. The rest of the family knew he was coming. They made all the arrangements and it was the last thing in the world I ever expected. And I heard his voice from the other room um, while we were practicing some music for Christmas Eve. And it was the weirdest thing, but it was awesome. Turned out he stayed for the month. And so we had a lot of time to spend with him and catch up and have other relatives visit. My other son came from New York and spent an extra weekend with us with Greg. He teaches English at Shanghai International University and he features in the podcast as well because I did make him sweater while he was here. Ashley finished a Ridari before he went back to China. I wasn't sure how much he'd wear it because it isn't all that cold over there. However, they don't have a much central heating in the college so he did use the sweater at times and he did send us a photo uh, that he was wearing it on the university sweater day. So I'll show you that later too. That was amazing. I'd forgotten I did that. I knit that up during that month of January. I was kind of in a, in a fog that month because everything was so different having him here. Anywho, that was uh, the Christmas excitement and surprise for our family. It was delightful. And uh, then it's just sort of been, I don't know, been working away on things and making soap and getting some new inspiration and finishing off some things. So I'm just going to go right into it. 
Is there anything I'm forgetting? I suppose I could tell you if you wanted to contact me. <clears throat> LF Dubois on Instagram and also on Ravelry. And chickenwoodstudio at gmail.com if you have, you know, if you want to write something more or make comments below in the uh, YouTube area there. So um, love to hear from you guys. Really appreciate your comments and encouraging notes. So love to have connections. So I'm going to start with my uh, FOs. Maybe I'll start. No, I'm going to start right at the top of my list here. See, I have found a couple new podcasts recently that I thought I would share with you. And uh, specifically, they are actually really, I was just looking through YouTube knitting podcasts was my search and going down through and, and eventually I got to this one called Fleece and Harmony. And they are two sisters from Prince Edward Island, Canada, out in the Maritimes. Fairly new podcast. I think they started in December, but they started a sheep farm on PEI about six years ago from what I have gotten from their stories. They left the big cities and decided to raise sheep and mill the, the fleece into yarn. They have a, a mini mill. They're right down the road from Belfast Mini Mills. And uh, so they, they spin their own yarn and have a shop on their property. They um, raise their sheep and are very active on Instagram. And so I've just had a ball following those girls. And I feel like I've gotten to know them because I've kind of binged watched their six or so episodes they've done so far. And the most fun part is that we had already decided to return to Prince Edward Island this summer for a family vacation. When our kids were little, we, we had friends who had a, had a place up there, and their relatives owned a farmhouse, which was available to rent. And we went to this farmhouse in the middle of potato fields at the end of a long red dirt road. It was magical, and we spent two weeks up there for several years. We would just load the car up with with books and projects and these from the days of the little CD players and I think even cassette players the kids would bring their books on tapes and I brought my my knitting and I actually purchased my first spinning wheel up there from a lovely lady who had a shop that's no longer there but <clears throat> very fond memories and wonderful times on PEI so I couldn't believe that this new podcast was from there and I'm so excited to go up and meet them and visit their shop and just to be at PEI again after, wow, what, 20, how many years? My kids were like 13. Okay, 15 years it's been since we've been up there. So really psyched. PEI, here we come. We're staying in another farmhouse. The, the old one has since been purchased by a family, but it'll be interesting to do a drive by and see how it's doing. So that's exciting. And the another one that I found in my search was Salapalooza Knits. This is um, Elizabeth from Norway. And she'll feature later. She has a sock pattern out that I really think is lovely. And actually, I mean, maybe I'll show you this now because I think I will use the yarn that I purchased from Fleece and Harmony for Jennifer's sock pattern. Is it right here like I thought it would be? Almost. Almost. Everything's sort of set around me and ready to roll. So this is Fleece and Harmony's sock yarn. It's called, oh, here they are, here's their logo. And this is their sock yarn line, warm and fuzzy on the inside. <laughs> Point Prim Sock. It's an 80% wool from their farm and 20% mohair. They, they try to promote all island uh, sourced wool. They do their own and some others. I think they've said their mohair they couldn't get on the island, but it's 80% island wool. It's 380 yards, 114 grams. And this color is called grape soda. So it's a little tonal and I can't wait to see how it knits up in a sock. And I love the fact that it's the mohair that's uh, natural reinforcing for a sock yarn. It'll hold up quite well because mohair is very strong. And um, this is the pattern I think I'm going to use by Elizabeth of Salapalooza. And this is her sock nest monster. I mean, sock nest sock pattern. 
That motif is to represent the monster lifting out of the I don't know. If you watch her podcast, you can get the story. Oh my goodness, they're so sweet. It's just this beautiful lace down along the side, and the rest is stockinette stitch. So, um, but I have <laughs> how many other socks going on? So I'm going to wait on this, but at least now I've showed you the lovely yarn, and now I feel like I can wind it up and get it ready to start maybe this summer. Because, uh, yeah, <laughs> start-itis, whip-itis, I got too much going on. This is the card that I sent, that they sent in with the yarn. They're one of their color cards. They have variegated, and this is their um, worsted weight. They also have a solid color color card and uh, I thought I would I'd like to see these variegated ones and because the solid colors you can pretty much tell online in their website what they look like um, so that's that and then they tucked in a little surprise oh no where did my camera go is it still working I touched the wrong button on my there we go they tucked in a little bar of soap for me they didn't know I was a soap maker <laughs> But they uh, promote other island items in their shop, and um, I still have yet to see. Uh, potato juice is the liquid in this soap. I haven't opened it yet. Um, I'm going to look and see if, what the benefits of potato juice are. But it, it's a local product, so that's cool. If you know anything about PEI, you know it's the land of potato fields and potatoes. And we used to dig new potatoes from the edge of the field for our dinners at the farmhouse. We would have a fish dinner and fresh boiled new potatoes and heavenly. And we'd have a little tea party afterwards. And On their recent podcast, they interviewed a, a local woman who is Lady Baker's Tea. And she sells her teas at the farmer's market. And just hearing their discussion in her interview brought me right back. We always went to the farmer's market. And I look forward to going back there this summer. Anyway, okay, so... That's Fleece and Harmony and Salapalooza Knits for my new podcasts. Psyched. Anything else I need to say? I don't know. I guess I'll get to the finished objects. And I'm hoping that the recording is okay. I cannot find my little tiny recording microphone, which is maybe a good thing because then I won't have all those problems. However, the sound quality may not be that great, but I'm going to give it a try. So I finished... I have five FOs to share with you. The first one, <clears throat> I know I've mentioned this before because I think I've started it like, um, yeah, last January. It was going to be my EYF gowl for my black or yarn knitting project. So, so maybe I'll do it this way. This is the Fuerta cowl by, and she's here on my phone. I had it all set up and ready for you. Um, Greta Menson. Greta Menson on Ravelry. I don't know how well that's coming across. Uh, her Instagram name is... I have the pattern. Her Instagram name, I believe, is Ocean24. And I'll put that in some notes, whether they're below here in the YouTube or on uh, my blog, which I might use that for. I'm not sure, <clears throat> but I'll, I'll make a note of it somewhere. <laughs> this is a lovely lace, three a lace panel and a cable. Maybe it does go this way. A lace panel and kind of an antler type cable. Three sections of those, two of each. And it was really a lovely knit. Once I got used to the pattern and where I was on the pattern, it was quite um, you know, not too mystifying. The, the cable, you do have to keep track of where you are closely. So I always have a pencil along, and I, if I need to make new charts, I just make them. The yarn is blacker, West Country Tweed, just as a, to mention that again. And I uh, picked this up at the Woolly Thistle. And I thought it might be a little too toothsome or toothy. <laughs> But I've worn it a lot. It's so cozy. This late winter, because I didn't have it all winter, I just finished it. Uh, it's kind of, you know, it's so tall. I didn't do the full length. It was just too tall. And this is tall enough that, you know, it sort of gathers around your neck and without being tight and um, clingy, it's just like a 
lovely protective layer. So that was a success. Very happy with that. And I did another cowl this winter because when Donna Smith's Shetland yarn came out last fall, I was just like drooling with, you know, wanting to see what it was like and uh, didn't know when I would be getting to Shetland again, didn't know if I'd be getting to EYF because <clears throat> I had already gone last year, pardon me. So I contacted Donna and then at some point it was available. So I ordered a kit for the cowl, for Donna's cowl. It's called Meiji, Meiji's Cowl. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's really sweet. And this was the gray that I got. It was sort of a medium gray. And for some reason, the lower end is folding up here. There we go. And this is so lovely. Really, really lovely little lace pattern. And uh, again, similar to the other one. Just a perfect extra layer. They're so comforting. I really like that sometimes, you know, that you don't have to swoop around the long shawl scarf things. They're very handy and, and stylish. This is just so comfortable and easy. So happy with this too. And here's what's left of the yarn. I don't remember how many skeins. I may have gotten two skeins for this, but you can look up the kit on Donna's, Donna's website, Donna Smith Designs. So again, I'm, I'm well cowled. You know, they talk about being well happy, wheel happy. Well, I'm wheel cowled for the next winter or a few. <laughs> and this is another one. I made the Merry Dancers beanie by Elizabeth Johnston, who was last year's Shetland Wool Week patron. Um, this was, I actually ended up making it twice because the first one, I did on smaller needles and it just, it was just crazily too small. So I did this one on the next, I'd forgotten. I, I guess I thought I needed to do it because sometimes my hats are so big. The gauge is so different than in the patterns. I think partly because I knit in the round on a small needle, whereas the Shetland knitters will knit with their long double pointed needles and their belt and it's a much tighter gauge. When I do that, I get a much tighter gauge. Um, so anyway, I did this back to the way I usually do. It came out perfectly. The size is perfect, and I love the colors. I have a combination of Jameson and Smith and Jamesons of Shetland. When my son Ethan was up to Shetland last summer, he picked up a ball of the apple, the Granny Smith green from Jamesons of Shetland while he was shopping downtown. It was, so it's fun. It's a fun memory hat. It's got a lot of... Oh, a lot of connections to it. Plus it's really cozy and warm and I thoroughly enjoyed knitting it, especially the second time around once you get used to a pattern. Too bad it sort of doesn't happen that way with mittens and socks. You get impatient to finish the second one. But this one, I knew it was a solution to a problem, so maybe that's why it was easier to get through. A lot of fun. And the last two FOs are two sweaters. Shirt was kind of bunching up here. Um, I had started... One I'd started quite a while back, and I did finish it this fall, and I wore it a lot this winter. I think it's my favorite uniform sweater. It's the Sea Change by Jennifer Steingass, Knit Love Wool on Instagram. And I made it with a Rowan Felted Tweed, and it's the brown with the flex of blue and gray and silver and white and then the, the light blue with a lot of flex in it too obviously tweed and it was delight to knit i really am glad i did the shaping um so it feels it's a little longer than i thought it would be so it's almost like a tunic sweater which is fine with me it's just so comfortable the yarn is light and warm and really um delightful to knit with oh can't say enough I'm afraid it might be stretching out a little, but that's all right. I mean, I, I don't, I didn't want it to be really too fitted, form fitted. And next one was a quick uh, knit, really. Uh, Lady Marple by, oh dear, okay, Nadia Cretin Le French designer. 
Here's the pattern. There's her name. Find it on Ravelry. And the thrill with this one, not only is uh, it's wonderful to wear, it's using my um, Castlemouth Moret DK that I picked up at Rhinebeck last year from Daughter of a Shepherd when she had her pop-up show with Jill Makes Stuff over in Kingston. And it was really an impulse buy because I kind of knew that it was a limited supply. I just, I just loved it. I loved it and I felt like a terrible spendthrift thinking, what am I really going to make with this? It's, it's more like worsted weight. It might be heavy. It, it's perfect for this design. It holds the shape. It's cozy. It's lightweight. It just feels wonderful on. And the design itself, actually, I, I, I wasn't excited about doing short rows for the shoulder cap. I don't think I've done that maybe, maybe once before. I was such a big baby. <laughs> I was asking Andrea, who inspired me to make this, Andrea, who is Adirondack Knitter. She's one of my local friends, and she, uh, she had worn one of these to Rhinebeck last fall. She had done it in a very soft, um, was it loft, Brooklyn tweed maybe? And I love the sweater on her. So I was like putting off getting these sleeves on and she was like, ah, it's not a problem. I didn't have a problem with it. It's just, just over in no time. And she was right. So that was a good learning curve for me because sometimes things like that intimidate me and then I put the thing down and then I don't, then it could have been done ages before. So I'm really happy I persevered and I got to wear this a lot this, this past month with a navy blue long sleeve tee and my jeans. It also has a little bit of a fitted design on the side and it's a little shorter. So I also was able to wear it with one of with my Ann Carolyn smock, which I had sewn. And um, that's a design by Ellen Mason, Oda Seer on Ravelry. And that was like one of my goals was to wear a little short cardi with a, with a, tunic top and skinny jeans and it felt so fun to be able to do that so yay that's been great so those are the FOs now I'm up to it's only been about 15 minutes no 20 minutes I wanted to show you um, works in progress a few of them if you care and then I'll talk a little bit about soap after that and then maybe some other upcoming traveling plans so maybe I'll merge those in because they do somewhat relate to each other, some of them. Uh, I'll start here because this is this year's Shetland Wool Week beanie designed by the patron Oliver Henry and Sandra Mason from Jameson and Smith. And probably you've all heard about this and seen it. It came out um, during EYF last month. And um, I'm so psyched because turns out I'm going to go to Shetland Wool Week this year with my hubby. And uh, we're going to go to Scotland ahead of that a little bit for a few days. And we're going to stay on a few days after. And I'm so thrilled to be, be able to say that. So I ordered the kit from Fula, the Fula Wool folks out on the island of Fula. Um, because just because they were um, highlighting the natural colors for their their beanies. And uh, I just, I kind of liked not having to decide on the colors, but I really just love the natural colors. I've said that before many times. And these are just so sweet. And they're special because they are only the sheep that live on Fula, which is several miles off the west coast of mainland Shetland. Years ago, I saw, when I first learned about Fula, you may have seen this too, there's a movie, and correct me if I'm wrong, I maybe should have checked this out, but the movie called The Edge of the World, um, it was an old black and white film, I found it on YouTube, I believe, I also got it from my local library on request, about the community on Fula, maybe in the 30s or so, 1930s, and now they... There's a story about a few families there, but how they ended up leaving the island because it was economically too hard to stay afloat. Hey, I'm just going to insert this little blurb about the movie, The Edge of the World. I did some research and I found out that it is, was filmed on the island of Fula, 
but it was about the island of St. Kilda, which is an island, I believe, in the Outer Hebrides. Probably should have checked that out, too. Um, it was about <clears throat> depopulation of the island communities. It was made in 1938. I think directed... Oh, I, can't, I wish I looked it up online. I didn't make a photocopy, but I did request the movie from my library storage. So anytime there's something precious like that that you know is still available, check it out. Keep it in circulation. It keeps them alive and on the shelves because it's just so sad. At first it didn't show up in my search and I was heartbroken to think that they had possibly let it go. But I changed my uh, search whatever, and it did come up. So I'll have it here within a week, probably. And I look forward to watching it again. Um, so it was about the community on St. Kilda and the families and all, but they couldn't film it on St. Kilda at the time. They were able to film it on Fula. So that's where I got the idea in my head that it was Fula, because it was. <laughs> Hope you get a chance to see it. If you do, let me know what you think. Isn't that a fun bouquet? Oh my gosh. And they're soft and squishy, and um, I just, oh, so. That's my Shetland beanie for this year. Actually, I think I'm making it for my husband. Maybe I'll make another one for me and some other colors that I have left over from many other Shetland projects. And or Norwegian jumper weight. I have getting a collection of that. Anywho, here's how it's coming along. The, the um band in corrugated rib. There we go. Just using all, almost all the colors coming up through there in the ribbing. And now I'm starting the little sheet motif. It's coming along swimmingly. So, and, and, and I mustn't forget my little stitch marker, which is actually backward. No, it isn't. There we go. My stitch marker from Patricia of Knitography, who's going great guns with her farm business. She makes the um, blockers that you, I'm sure you've seen the mitten ones and the sock blockers. And now she's been making a lot of other tools and notions from the birch on her farm in Norway. And she dyes yarns and we've collaborated with our other friend, Jill, from who is Birdie and Poppet, with our, our kits. We have the knitting bag, yarn, Patricia's uh, beautifully done, I don't know, notions and blockers. And uh, I've donated some soap and hand lotion to the collaborations. I imagine we'll probably do some more in the future. So keep your eyes peeled if you'd like to have one. And uh, you know, that's the latest um, as far as the collabs go been really fun. If you've been able to purchase one, let me know what you think. I'd love to hear feedback and stuff. Oh, there's my phone. Okay, next. Whips in progress. I mean, maybe I should go in, uh, no, there is no chronological order because some of them maybe started ages ago. This one is something that I, I brought home from EYF last year. It's the, the Wildflower Shawl by put out by Berlin Yarn. The folks out on in the Outer Hebrides, forgotten the island that they're on. They're on one of the islands. Well, look them up. BerlinYarn.co.uk. Let me. Uh, here's the thing. Here we go. If you're curious, they've some lovely colors, some lovely natural Hebridean brown, and blends. And the one that I purchased was, I may have shared this with you before, the lovely blue, sea oceany blue color. And um, I've started this about four times, I think. Oh dear, needle. But it's, I think I'm finally getting the hang of it because I, what I had to do was make my own notes. It's just going to continue on into a very long triangle shape and then it can wrap around. I had to, and I recommend doing this sometimes with patterns. Um, when sections are referred to as little chunks of the pattern and you have to go back and forth and back and forth, I ended up making three and a half pages of notes just so that I could knit 
in a continual process using the charts, but actually no, not, yeah, there's a couple charts for the, the little motifs, but sections between those motifs is written out and I just could not keep track of where I was and what I was doing. There's constantly a, a little bit of an increase going on. So that helped me greatly and I finally got back to this project this past month and that was sweet because I don't, it makes me sad when projects sit there, well, sad and a little guilty too, <laughs> about the investment sitting there, never, never being finished and forgot, being forgotten and never being able to use what I had hoped to do in the first place. So that's great to have that up and going. And um, what else shall I talk about? I have two mittens going on. I'm a glutton for mittens. This one, this was the Advent Knit Along from uh, the designer in Norway. I believe she did the, you know, the fabulous mystery one. And I don't know, I'm so sorry, I wish I could pronounce her name properly. It's Wench Rolled, Venture Rolled. And um, it's a lovely, cutest pattern. And I love using the Norwegian finule. I believe that's what it is. A little. I have a, I don't know if I have a, anyway, a label. This is the, the advent. Isn't that so cute? The little squirrels and the birds. And, and then I finally started on the decrease at the tip. Still have yet to do the thumb. Love the cuff. Interesting striped ribbed cuff. So um, that's where I'm stalled on this one. Just not because I'm particularly stalled, but um, I, other things have come into the forefront and I'm figuring these will be good summer projects. Have them ready for winter. And this is in the Matterroot tiny bag. Isn't that lovely linen flax? I just, this was a, another Rhinebeck couldn't resist this year. Love it. Ah, uh, let's see the other, the other mitten. Did I bring the other mitten? Yeah, I did bring the other mitten. Sorry. Here's the other mitten. This is one of my bags. Boop. Cute little, and of course it matches the project, which is always fun. Isn't that sweet? Uh, this is the Tuku sock wool. Tuku, actually it's 100%, it's not sock wool, it's Tuku fingering weight. And this is Finnish from, fin, from Finland. The project is actually from the little book of Gotland uh, mittens called the Mitten Book, which I've shared before on Instagram, I think. Very cool pattern, very different. Still have the thumb waiting to be done, and I'm not sure that I'm on the decrease yet, but it should be soon if it hasn't begun. I think I've been afraid to start it too soon. Sometimes I start, I get impatient, I start them too soon. And then I end up ripping out a bunch because they're just too short. There's nothing worse than a mitten that's too short. Just So look at that. It, it kind of bows out nicely, naturally, without any increases or decreases. Super warm. Look at that. So those are just some fat, fatter bits of stitches. They're, they're all the same. Blocking might help that. Here's hoping. So lovely yarn. And, um, you know, back in the summer knitting pile, when it's too hot to have big things over your uh, lap, like the two that I'm about to show you. I should really get these done before summer so that they'll be um, ready for use next winter. A couple of shawl patterns that I have going. Um, the one I've, I've brought to you before is the one that I'm doing with my hand-spun Flat Island yarn. Flat Island is the, the flock that's on the island off of the coast of Maine. And I'm doing uh, the shawl called Hoarfrost by Andrea Mowry, who is Dreary Knits, the Hoarfrost shawl, which I thought was, an, I've seen it done in, in the gray, and I just couldn't resist trying to do one. So I am on the lace section now. I finished the broken rib, which is interesting because it's showing my variation in color from my hand spinning. I guess I didn't quite blend it all out evenly. There are some darker sections, darker and lighter gray sections in the fleece. 
And I didn't notice that in the spinning, but I think in the end result's not going to matter. It just shows that it's hand spun. And here's the little lace project that when it's blocked out, it's going to be just great. So I'm getting there. This part is much easier to keep knitting. It's, it's all, I think I've stopped increasing for one. No, I have continued to increase, but the lace pattern itself is, for me, it's just easier to keep track of. And it's just a nice change from all the whole rest of it. So that's going to be really like wearing a blanket. It's it's like sort of DK weight, but but it's dense because I spun it kind of densely. Not really on purpose, but it's long it's long fibers, uh, long staple length. So although I carded it, I more I spun it more like like worsted weight. So it's a semi worsted because I I didn't you can't card really long staple length uh, the way a woolen spun yarn would be so that's why and, and it is nice because then you, you keep the luster and it's going to be super lustrous so there's different ways of spinning different fleeces of course and it's been a bit of a learning experience so it, it isn't exactly how i expected but i think i'm going to enjoy it, the end result just because it highlights those qualities of the fleece that it came from and the other shawl Here'd you go. The other shawl is Daughter of a Shepherd Hebridean. This was the shawl that, that Rachel Atkinson has had in her stand at Rhinebeck the year before. And at this point, it's just, it's just garter stitch, garter stitch, garter stitch, which is just a delight. And uh, then this is going to have a lace, a lace panel at the end, like the one, like the, uh, Hoarfrost. Um, oh my gosh, I can't wait to just have this done. It's so lovely. Mm, it smells so sheepy. It's beautiful brown. It's like my little kitty. <laughs> I could wear it now. Eh. So, another one to be, uh, I'm just like on the home stretch on both of these shawls. I have been working on them for so long, it seems. So, I need to maybe focus a little and have them ready for winter when winter comes before the hot heat of summer. Ah, focus, schmocus. I just knit what I want when I want, right? <laughs> um, and one more UFO really just begun. A uh, bunch of us are making plans for next Rhinebeck, and we are, we have a Airbnb, and we're going to gather for a few days around the Rhinebeck weekend, and we are all going to make it, at least one pattern together. And this one is the tree pattern from um, Rower, it's Karen Schneider's Rowerk Trees, Rowerk Trees, sorry for messing that up, but it's a really cool pattern because the back is stockinette while the front is this lovely uh, twisted stitch pattern really, it's not, it's like two stitch cable so I call them twisted stitch in my my knitting world and they're kind of they're on a, a reverse stockinette background and one is pointing upward and the next one is down and uh, obviously you can look it up on, on Ravelry I'm trying to get the light to work on that it's hard in this beautiful um, burgundy colored yarn from webs which is their line of um, Peruvian wool. I think I have a label handy. I was inspired by Marta of Martushka Knits and her podcast to pull this one out of the pile and bring it back to life. And I'm really enjoying it. I really enjoy the comfort of just picking it up and, and knowing just what I'm doing. Just, you know, steadily adding to the life and the color of this whilst I think of my daughter Corinne as she continues to hike the Appalachian Trail next month. She's going to go back to the trail for a short trip and this is sort of my prayer blanket for her, for her trip and her dad who's going to be joining her this time and um, I just love the idea of you know the colors of the mountains 
and the hiking and the, and the trail and they're going to be in the Shenandoahs this part and uh, springtime in Shenandoahs is going to be gorgeous. So I've joined in with Martush Fenitz and if you are inspired to do the same start a new one or pull an old one out of the pile uh, to keep it alive because they take a long time and a lot of yarn and um, I've, I've donated a bar of wool wash and a lotion bar if you're interested in joining her crochet along on Instagram and Ravelry. It's, and the hashtag is crochet from your heart. So if you look up that hashtag on Instagram, you can find several other people who've joined and pictures of their work. And it's really fun to see all the different colorways and color themes that people have. And if this doesn't get to be a blanket, at least it'll become a shawl. But I mean, I think it is really wide. It's about five feet wide. So it'll definitely cover, you know, it would definitely be a, a great throw blanket. A be kind of blanket for on the couch or wherever she wants to have it. And it's full of memories. It's it's full of a handful of minis that I've gotten from Martouche, from Marta, from Erin Joy, from Holland Handmade, a lot of leftover sock yarns, some of my own dyed sock yarns, and so many projects and things. It's it's all pretty much though um, wool and nylon. I have I have some scraps from an alpaca blend and some, but I haven't put in the the blends because I don't want them to block out differently. So I'm sticking with probably superwash, maybe not all superwash, but at least they're all sock yarn weights. Sorry, I'm rocking sock weights with some nylon in them, and I mean it'll probably be, I'll be fine in the end. But I'm trying to be mindful to keep them sort of consistent so it isn't like seersucker once it gets washed. Oh, so I think, you know, that's about it. I've talked about Prince Edward Island and going back to Scotland, which I'm so thrilled about. I've shared with you all that I'm working on. And uh, spinning, oh, I did have a little spinning. And then um, I'm kind of tired. I think I'm going to stop after the spinning this time. Maybe I'll I'll do a soap making, or not a not an instructional soap video, but um, maybe just a, where's my camera, come back, just a demonstration kind of a soap video, if any of you are interested in seeing the process of hot process soap making. I've put a little short vids up, sometimes up on Insta or um, my YouTube channel, but I've enjoyed so much and learned so much from other people's um, soap making videos and I'm, I, that's, I'm just fascinated with it. I, it's like I could watch it for hours on end. <laughs> so if you're curious, I might consider doing that. Let me know. And um, I was going to talk to you a little bit more about what I was spinning. I've been spinning up the more of the Grat Trondersau from Patricia in Norway. I finally pulled out a spinning wheel and, and keeping it in the kitchen and here's how it is turning out. Isn't that just gorgeous? Oh, it's a it's kind of a heathery gray. I think it's the darker of the grays of the sheep. They they have three colors in one fleece so there's a bit of sorting or blending and I just love this uh, this blend. You know, it's probably, I think it's, it looks pretty consistent too. So I think that, that a sweater's worth of this yarn is going to be consistent and uh, color wise. Maybe not perfectly consistent spinning wise, but that's hand spun. <laughs> and uh, it'll be love. It's just like, oh my gosh, it's delightful. Mm. Thanks, Patricia. So that's the spinning. I still have some flat island silver to finish to, to finish up for my shawl. And then I did impulsively sort of sign up for Cheryl's Spin 15 a Day, 1764 Shepherdess, and ordered a little kit of six different breeds, which then I, I started one and, and put them down. White Lincoln Top, UK sourced. Someday when I'm bored, uh, I'll work on these. Black Shetland Top from the UK. Um, 
Manx Lowton top, which I'm really curious about. I follow, um, do you follow Lovely Greens on Instagram? She's from the Isle of Man, and I just love her podcast. I'm a little intimidated. She does so much beautiful stuff, gardening and soap making and lovely stuff. What is her name? Ooh, I've forgotten her name. Lovely Greens from, from the Isle of Man. Her name will come back to me. This is Tea's Water Top. So, so far, two long staples and a short. Oh, White South Down. Oh, that's short, probably, and I forgot that was in there. I look forward to working with that. I just luckily got to the update from South Downs Yarn UK uh, from Louise to get some skeins of South Down jumper weight yarn. So psyched because I'm intrigued by this breed and by this fleece. And uh, what's the last one that I had already opened was White Dorset Horn. Oh, sorry, they're still in the bags. I mean, once you take them out, you can't really get them back in. So maybe I'll tell you more about these once I've done some work on them. If you're interested, I could do a little report back to you about my UK spin along club with Cheryl of spin 15 a day. It's a worthy goal to spin 15 minutes a day. I have so many worthy goals and I do have a hard time committing to them for a while there. Yeah, get this down. I was doing great with my bullet journal and my lists and my habit stacking and all that jazz and then Holidays hit, and the post-holidays, and company, and Greg here for the month, and woo, just kind of got swamped, and I feel like I'm maybe coming up for some air recently, so here's hoping. And I guess that's it for today. Maybe I won't have to edit too much, because I just want to get this out, out to you, and... Um, connected again and uh, hear what you're up to so drop me a line over on Ravelry or down here in the comments or on uh, Instagram um, yeah it's still sort of sprinkling out there but uh, it's definitely changed and it's a lot more green than it's been in a while you can see a little bit of the green back there anyway hope you're well and I look forward to, to seeing you again sooner than last time bye